More than 2,000 people drown in rivers in North America every year, and some of them are anglers. 60% of the people who die in rivers are swept away and drowned. The other 40% are caught in log jams, in undercuts, or are foot and trapped, and die. The lack of understanding of your environment, your equipment, and your own ability lead to poor decision making. 90% of the injuries on rivers happen within 10 feet of the shoreline. And yes, it can happen to you. Five, four, three, two, one. There he is. Nice job. Nice countdown. <laughs> yes, I got him. All right. Yuri. Fly fishing is a pastime like none I've ever known. For many, it transcends mere recreation and rises almost to the level of religion. I know that feeling. That's why I've spent the better part of the last 10 years traveling the world as host of ESPN's Fly Fishing the World. Hi, I'm John Barrett. Along the way, I've been fortunate to work with the Sims Fishing Company out of Bozeman, Montana. Not only do Sims make the finest waders and wading products on the market, they also pride themselves of being innovators. Innovators of products that make wading safer for all anglers. With this in mind, Sims has assembled a team of professionals to help teach you a little bit more about wading safety. Beginning with Dave Whitlock, one of the patriarchs of fly fishing. Jim Lavalier is the founder of Rescue Canada. And Ralph Cutter, is a trained rescue diver and swiftwater rope and rescue technician. Together they will bring together some very important knowledge and skills that will help you get the most out of your fly fishing and stay safe while doing so. Trout streams are impressive to behold. They run fast over sometimes merciless terrain and even in the heat of summer the water can remain ice cold. The first thing to remember about fly fishing is if you want to catch the big wild trout that live in these rivers, you'll have to be able to learn how to wade in these rivers. Wading safety begins with the equipment you choose. I've gone on a pair of Gore-Tex breathable waders. These work in very, very cold conditions with the Sims layering system underneath them, or in the hottest of summer days because they are breathable and the moisture will move right out through the waders. Neoprene waders are warm. They'll provide you with a little flotation and oftentimes a little bit of padding against rocks if you fall. But in warmer weather, they can become uncomfortable, causing you to overexert yourself. Once you've decided what type of waders you want to wear, your next choice is the type of boot. Stocking foot waders require a separate pair of boots that you lace on the outside of your waders. This setup gives the anglers the best feel of the rocks and riverbed and provides maximum dexterity for wading and hiking. The drawback is if you get caught in rocks or mud, it's more difficult to free yourself and get out of your waders. Boot foot waders give anglers a better chance to escape from an entrapment, as well as provide more warmth than stocking foot waders. The downside is they make walking a little more hazardous because they don't fit quite as well. I also have on not one, but two wading belts. Two wading belts work well because if I get into real deep water conditions, I can take the top belt and slide it up around my chest, cinch it real tight. It allows me to cross deep, deep sections of the stream. These belts are your defense against water filling your waders, should you happen to fall. I also carry a Sims wading staff. Now this wading staff will get me out of troubling situations if I get in too deep I need to use the staff to turn around or to support myself when I'm going across real fast water. Choosing the proper wading boot is critically important. I've got on felt sole boots right now and this is the traditional boot that most people have used for years and years. It works pretty well on rocks and in the water and even on some slick moss. But there's some new compounds that have been developed including a sticky rubber compound. This works real well in the water. It actually holds up well on the banks, and with the cleats, I even have more stability. Now, you don't want to use cleats if you're going to climb into a boat all day and there's a chance of scratching it or puncturing a raft. But 
If all you're doing is waiting, the cleats help a lot.